Good morning, welcome, and thank you for joining today's preview for Collect 2024, celebrating its 20th edition as a pioneering art fair for contemporary craft and design. Collect 2024 will be taking place between the 1st and the 3rd of March, with previews on the 28th to the 29th of February at Somerset House. This is the sixth year that Button Collective has been lucky enough to handle um, the communications for Collect, and please do stay close with us in the countdown to the fair. Work will be evolving all the time, and we will be sharing assets immediately after this preview. Today, though, we're going to be sharing current trends and highlights that are coming through, and you'll be hearing from Natalie Melton, the Acting Executive Director of the Crafts Council, Isabel Dennis, the Fair Director for Collect, and Daniela Wells, the Market Consultant for Collect. There is a Q&A button that you can ask questions via. Please do at the end of the presentation, and we will do our very best to come back to you. So without further ado, I'm delighted to hand over to Natalie Melton. Thanks, Sarah. Good morning. 20 years of Collect. We might be celebrating a significant milestone, but the thrill of stepping into the space at Somerset House and discovering new artists and new work never gets old. The very first Collect Fair 20 years ago showcased the work of Edmund Val and Julian Stair, amongst others. It's worth noting that Julian's work was shown at Freeze this year and Edmund's at Freeze Masters. Let's just say if you were buying at the first collect 20 years ago, you may well have been onto a good thing. And I think that continues to hold true today. So with close to 200 galleries and thousands of makers later, to be a fair that's 20 years old and continues to champion new and fresh work is no mean feat. It's what makes it exciting. The backdrop behind us are works by Christian Ovalen, recipient of the Brookfields Properties Craft Award in 2022. These are now housed in the nation's collection of contemporary craft, of which the Crafts Council are the custodians. Some are currently on display at Compton Verney as part of one of the most significant and sizeable collection loans we've made for an exhibition that explores craft practice across 3,000 years. In that context, 20 years doesn't seem so long, but it demonstrates that the ecology of craft activities that we support and the responsibility we have to ensure that the work we champion and share reflects the breadth and diversity of craft practice today. That's an evolving and exciting journey for all of us. Collect is a space for wonder and discovery. It's an opportunity to support and invest in artists and makers growing in their skill and expression. It's a moment in time to connect with others passionate about making. There's always a really celebratory atmosphere in Somerset House each year at Collect. And for me, the fair hits the sweet spot between showcasing the evolution of artists' work year on year and exciting us with completely new discoveries. The bar was set very high last year at Collect on that, but I know that the 20th anniversary will surpass that. I hope you'll agree, and I'll hand over to Isabel Dennis, the Collect Fair Director, to tell you more about what we have in store. Thank you, Natalie. Thanks very much for that. And hello, everyone. Um, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the Collect 24 Media Launch. Um, as Natty said, my name is Isabel Dennis and I'm the Fair Director for Collect. And it's great to have so many familiar names joining us today and with many new people, very much very welcome. And it's also great to be hosting it online so that you can obviously see this um, um, after it's because there's a recording and it, I hope it's allowed many more of you to attend. So I'd also like to thank our marketing manager, Antonia Ridley, fair manager, Sarah Dormer, market consultant, Daniela Wells, and Sarah Jensen and her team at Button Collective, who, for all their hard work in bringing today, uh, together today's media launch. So to Collect and to you all. Across the international calendar, art fairs are well and truly thriving again, and Collect earlier this year had its highest attendance on record exceeding pre-pandemic figures, which I think tells you a lot about the fair. 
And we are full steam ahead for 2024, which sees the 20th edition taking place at Somerset House in central London. And to complement this global reach, with the fair is planning again with Artsy to promote the fair online to an online audience. So, launched in 2004 by the UK's Crafts Council, the fair has been pioneering and from the beginning in its commitment and passion to be the global authority for exceptional museum quality contemporary craft and design, which is being made today for the collector's market. So we want this November media launch to be inspiring, uplifting, celebratory, thought-provoking, as collectors all of these things, and we are excited to give you the first taste of what is to come. Positioned early in the cultural calendar, Collectors held in London, which is looked to as one of the most important international destinations for excellence in arts and culture, attracting prestigious collectors and buyers. Over its 20 years, Collectors become such a powerful, established force for facilitating and the discovery of stunning contemporary craft. And its exhibiting galleries represent and nurture the careers of some of the most exciting UK and international artists working today. It's set apart from many fairs as over 80% of the work on display has to have been made in the last five years. That is its USP and is one of the requirements for applying to the fair. So this is about the new, the contemporary, and is about supporting living artists and the galleries behind them. It means exciting, dynamic, notable and desirable new work is being introduced into the market by Collect on an annual basis. The roles, gallery play, the roles galleries play in supporting and the careers and growing the roster of their artists is essential and fully complements the roles, role of the fair itself. Collect provides an open and really approachable buying environment where collectors, both seasoned and new, art consultants, corporate buyers, interior designers, architects, curators, institutions, craft enthusiasts and many more can come and discover, admire, delight and purchase beautiful, unique pieces of work. And with its historic and beautiful Grade 1 listed architecture, Somerset House provides a stunning backdrop for displaying contemporary art in a fully immersive interior setting. It's just so different. Galleries get a fourth wall, so you walk into their setting. It's great. And we will see shortly how Collect's placement in culturally significant venues is also what sets the fair apart from others. So continuing a little with the fair's audience, during the pandemic, the millennial collectors were shown as some of the highest spenders in the arts. And we understand this continued growth is in the desire to purchase with integrity, focusing on provenance, authenticity, the handmade, the artisan and materiality, and the desire to be supporting and nurturing emerging talent as well as established. This again reinforces Collect's leadership and relevance as we continue to grow this new generation of collectors and their advocacy. And as mentioned, for those who visit, Collect is known for its open and accessible and welcoming environment for new collectors. One can't help but have an emotional response to the work, the textures, the scale, the three dimension, the color, and the knowledgeable gallerists invite and inspire confidence and encourage visitors to learn more about the work. And you'll often, in, you'll often meet the artists as well. And this, along with the beautiful setting, all helps with the sale of artworks on display. And exhibiting alongside these international galleries is Collect Open, which is a really important feature of the fair and has been part of the fair for over a decade. And Collect Open is a showcase of ambitious, conceptual, craft-led installations by understanding and selected individual artists and collectives. And it's new projects every year. So Collect Open 2024 will present 14 new projects with works reflecting themes spanning sustainability in the environment, technology in craft, cultural heritage, psychology and the menopause. So to Collect 2024. Collect has always, been, has always delivered on international artistic talent that expresses cultural aesthetic, great creativity and demonstrates a deep knowledge of materials. 
From a piece of dramatic art jewellery to an exquisite piece of cold work blown glass. So I'd like to, I wanted to invite my very good colleague and valued colleague now, market consultant for Click, Daniela Wills, to join me here. Daniela has a wealth of experience and is a highly sought after independent voice in the contemporary craft sector. In one, uh, one form or another, Daniela has been involved in Collect every year since its launch and therefore she has become a great asset to me as well as friend and the fair and we work alongside each other to ensure that we maintain the quality, the integrity and the excitement of the new works that are being introduced, introduced to the fair year on year. This is the sixth year that we'll have been working together and I thought it was a great opportunity for us to share with you some of the context from the last 20 years and then we'll be giving you a lot more of the highlights for 2024. So I'm just going to pass to Daniela to talk a little bit about that. Thank you, Isabel. That was a, that was a fantastic intro. Um, so I've been asked to, to look a little bit at the, the marketplace, the beginning of, of Collect. Um, I've had the privilege of working on, on so many years. Uh, we've just got a couple of slides for you here to some people remember the, the early days. So over the last 50 years, um, sort of the broader context, uh, there's been a huge boom in, in art fairs globally. Um, since the uh, 1990s, apparently there were only 50, and now there's 300 a, a, across the world. Um, and Collect has been in that space um, uh, for 20 years now, um, and uh, it's weathered the financial crash of 2008, um, Brexit, and of course, more recently, COVID. And uh, that's pretty impressive. Um, I like to think that's because of its, uh, its focus. It's obviously focused on material-led works, um, and it's not wavered from that focus, so the contemporary um, and material. Uh, the Crafts Council launched the fair um, uh, back in 2004 to, to raise the profile of contemporary craft to the collector's market, and, um, and you know, that really has happened. Got a couple of images here of, uh, of the V&A, which was uh, at, at the beginning, and of course uh, Saatchi, and then through to Somerset House. But just briefly back to sort of pre-collect, um, pre-2004, and what was the market looking like? Um, in the late 1990s, I'm sure a lot of people remember the, the YBAs, it was all in, incredibly cool. Um, and craft was still struggling with quite a few negative connotations. Um, it was definitely seen secondary to, to, to fine art. Um, and in 2003, uh, Grayson Perry won the, um, the Turner Prize, um, obviously it's considered quite a radical choice, uh, just a year before the, the fair launched. Uh, but of course, we've seen clay being used um, now by so many different artists, um, and, uh, and obviously globally, and, and in lots of different spaces. And collectors played a really important part, uh, um, a, a real really important role in terms of rising stars. So Natalie mentioned Edmund de Waal, very much a um, household name. And his stand and the first collect was one of the few individual stands, uh, very much the precursor to uh, Collect Open. Um, and he was launching a significant uh, new development in his work, that of incredibly considered uh, installations of, of multiples of pots. Um, and of course now his, his work and his installations are absolutely global. So the, the location of the V&A was really important at the beginning. Um, uh, it was important to say museum quality. We wanted that context um, and incredibly supportive curatorial staff there, um, not least that they've purchased extensively for the V&A collection. So we have, um, uh, we all own a lot of beautiful works um, that uh, came from the Collect Fair. Um, the move to the Saatchi Gallery, so there were 10 years at the Saatchi Gallery. Um, I just think we've got two slides here, I'll just flip over here. Oh, we've got a couple of early, uh, early stands and early moments here with um, uh, some of our exhibitors with uh, uh, with their displays. In, um, at the Saatchi Gallery we had, uh, the Crafts Council was one of the first to, to hire the whole space um, in 2009 um, and that was just after a couple of quite major curated exhibitions focusing on the uh, Middle East and on China, curated by Saatchi, but it really gave a different context to contemporary par uh, craft in, in terms of in, in that space. Um, so Isabel also asked me to look at so then and now, so what still holds true from 2004 um, uh, to now going into 2024 next year? Um, what's wonderful is there are a number of characteristics of the fair which absolutely hold true from the beginning. Um, I'd say the two main factors at play are new work, new ideas, 
um, and of course skill. So the development of skill and also the, the transfer of skill and that's incredibly important when it comes to uh, contemporary making. So we, we, we specifically asked the galleries, as Isabel said, to, to focus on contemporary and so that for us is new work from established artists um, and also um, uh, new, new voices. So we asked galleries to introduce new artists that really are being forecast to be um, a next generation. So among that mature voice, you've got a lot of new, uh, new names coming through. So if you look at overall um, the fair, we have usually about sort of 35 uh, five to 40 galleries. And then they could be from sort of about 10 different nations in terms of where the galleries um, are based. But probably what's changed through, through the years is the range of nations and uh, the range of cultures that the artists that are coming with the galleries um, are from. So we have, uh, we're very excited, we have a new gallery from Canada, a fantastic presentation that we'll talk about shortly. Um, also a new gallery from Austria joining us. But probably the most interesting thing is if you look at the fair as a whole, is what you have from those different, uh, different nations now. And it's much, much broader uh, than it ever was before. So if you're looking back to the, the first uh, few years of, um, back at the V&A, it was very Eurocentric. We had a little bit of selection from uh, East Asia, predominantly Japan. Um, and now we have a considerably broader mix from across the globe. Um, and uh, that, that to me is what's in incredibly exciting in terms of what's being brought to London. So I'm sure everyone doesn't want to look at the older slides now. I'm going to uh, pass to Isabel. We'll talk a little bit more about next year. Thank you, Daniela. That's great. And I'll be passing back to Danny shortly just to do some of the top highlights that we've got. Um, and really interesting to hear that going through and, and, and sort of understanding how some of the galleries and the artists really cut their teeth at Collect and have done incredibly well from being part of this when there was no, no other fair like it to actually showcase contemporary craft. So here we're showing you some of our press images which we can make available to you um, and they were been taken here in our beautiful Crafts Council Gallery um, and they showcase um, some of the beautiful works that you'll be seeing at the fair um, this year. And, um, and works at Collect 2024 really showcase embodied narratives that explore a range of issues, including cultural identity and place. And as you'll see in the press release, Collect sees some excellent new additions to the fair. And that's what the fair is about. It's always about the, the new and looking forward, as well as some of our established and well-loved names. I think a special mention has to go to um, Joanna Bird Contemporary Collections. Joanna has participated in Collect for the whole of its, the fair's 20 years. She has and continues to support an impressive roster of artists and she will re represent uh, new works by London-based Instagram hot um, ceramicist Florian Gadsby who will form part of this year's cohort that she's showing at Collect. Vessel Gallery, uh, who's mostly specialist in glass, again are coming, we're welcoming them back to the fair. I believe they exhibited in the very first, 2004. Absolutely, yeah. Angel was there, so he's coming back with some amazing, and he, he has been there previous to, <laughs> since 2004 as well, many times. Um, he's bringing <clears throat> Stephen Edwards, who's a first time exhibitor to collect. Olivia Walker, who's creating a triptych um, for Collect, which is her biggest wall installation to date. Anna Mark and Thompson are bringing a new series of, of works and James Devereux, who is a new, new glass sculptures of um, shipwrecks, which is one of Vessel's greatest glass makers and he's, um, James is also a professional diver. And then Design Crafts Council Ireland is taking a, a very large space and we're very excited to see that. Quite a lot of the galleries and the dealers and the, and the exhibitors are responding to the 20 years. So they'll be showcasing new works that are coming through um, across the 20 years of Collect who are from Irish makers. And the lineup of artists at this year's fair features powerful narratives around identity expressing complex messages through their artistry. And including that is um, Alveston Fine Arts. And Fergus will be bringing um, a curation called A Voice. Uh, which is a multi-artist um, presentation including Julia's, Julia Hall's work which is absolutely beautiful and it's their oil paintings and often of the, natural, of the um, traditional dress of women 
and then their, their words are written across and embroidered across these paintings. They're just stunning. And they are um, about marginalised and refugee women telling their stories of fleeing their countries and then coming to the UK. The, he also has an Athena whose practice expresses her unmasked true voice as a female artist diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. And then he also has new artist Simon Dredge, whose current body of work is inspired by the use of Polari, which um, some of you may know in the 1950s was a secret language used within the gay communities in the UK. New to collect is the Stratford Gallery. Welcome to you. And then they'll spotlight some ceramic works from first-generation mid-career female artists from Japan and Korea who've not really been seen and recognised so much, including Sayaka at Shingu, whose fragile ceramics bodies body, um, embodies the dark and sombre fleeting natures of flower and the human life. 50 Goldborn will curate um, heritage and transmission, and Pascal always showcases um, many new works by artists of, the, of African heritage. And this year, she's including a really interesting series of ceramics made in collaboration with a father-daughter pair of Chris Bramble and his daughter, Freya Bramble Carter. And we welcome back Into Art, who represents Christian Ovenland behind us. Um, into Art challenges the underrepresentation of people with learning disabilities through integrated programs of art education, professional development, and innovative public programming. Really, really interesting works that come through from these artists. And for Collect the Gallery, we'll present new works from three artists, including Dawn Wilson, whose drawings depict figures in, from communities in Jamaica, Mali, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and who will be cre who create new ceramic slab tiles and drawings using black clay and incised with drawn lines and slips. And then further pushing the boundaries and the exploration of materials on display at Collect and other highlights include the B BR Gallery, um, who join us again, and Sally is creating a dialogue between East and West together with 11 Chinese artists and four British artists, uh, including Ying Zhe Chen, who creates intricate pieces combining porcelain and silver, and some of them are coming up. It's a beautiful one with the porcelain hands. And David Clark, who will be known to many of you, who's often cited as one of Britain's most highly innovative silversmiths. And then we have Bullseye Project coming back to us um, from the USA, and they'll debut a collaborative work with Joshua Curley and new artist Guy Marshall Brown using Curley's innovative Pat de Vere works and Marshall Brown's expertise in 3D printing and rapid prototyping. So good stuff to look out there. So just to finish off this little section, I'm just going to hand back to Daniela, who's just going to talk about a few more of the kind of highlights and themes that are coming through for this year, which will be of interest to you. Hi, yes, yeah, so uh, for... Uh, a choice few. It's incredibly difficult, actually, to, to consider highlights of, uh, of a fair like this. But we have a few examples uh, just to talk to slide because, of course, each individual artist um, is, is incredibly layered. Uh, so we have, uh, first of all, here um, uh, from the exhibitor, Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Trust, that, uh, that you may know funds um, skills and, and development uh, for, for makers. And that's incredibly important for us, and it's really great to have them showcase a range um, at the fair. So this is um, work by uh, Fung and Bedford, uh, Bedford, as you can see, um, that largely work in, in paper. Um, and the, the interesting thing in terms of the development of, of, of their work is the um, through Quest, um, there's, they've been studying um, advanced origami techniques, um, including tessellation and also some Rhino 3D to create um, uh, some more complicated designs. And to further this work, um, learning from a book binder um, for various bindings and 3D techniques. So uh, this is an incredibly interesting sort of detailed level of, of learning that, uh, that uh, the artist makers at Collect are, um, are, are able to have through, through Quest. Chosen here, Fung and Bedford, um, with a little correlation in terms of uh, the first year of, of, of the fair with um, Wendy Ramshaw, who... Um, presented architectural works. Uh, so she was actually similar to Angela Fung, uh, a trained jeweler, but was as working at scale. So I quite like the idea of a sort of incredibly detailed craft skill being developed um, from, from sort of the tiny to, to sort of the, the gap scale in, in an environment. 
So we go to the next slide here, which is uh, from the Craft Alliance of uh, uh, the Craft Alliance in Canada. Um, brand new to the fair, um, and, um, and our first presentation of, of this scale of, of Canadian work. So Isabel was saying, you know, what, what really stood out in terms of the advisory committee meeting? Um, certainly after the, this was a first for me, um, after 20 years um, of working on the fair, to have artists within the selection from, um, from the Craft Alliance uh, that ha are specifically rooted in the First Nations of, of Canada. So this exhibitor is, um, is curating uh, quite a broad selection of work, um, uh, untitled Here and Now, and it's looking at the powerful indigenous history combined with immigrant traditions. So here, this is um, the artist uh, Gordon Sparks, um, who's exploring the, the Mi'kmaq people's stories, um, the language, of course, through, through masks. So really looking in an incredibly deep and involved way um, at traditions, knowledge, and, and wisdom, and of course, the connection to land, which is, is very specific in terms of First Nation peoples. Next we have uh, Gallery Ravel from France. So they joined us earlier on this year um, and uh, they had a really interesting uh, fresh group of, uh, of new artists um, and they were keen to, to bring, bring new artists also to next year as well. They, uh, Gallery Ravel, they're concentrating on artists that have been historically marginalised by, by Western art. So it's really their focus to, to create some variety within, within the market. Uh, Talia's work really stood out to, to us. She's an artist and, and teacher living and working in, in Cape Town. Um, she's looking at her own lived experience of, of being a South African Indian, looking at identity and culture. Isabel was talking uh, um, earlier about the fact that this is really coming through quite a lot for, for next year is, is identity and exploring, exploring that. Uh, through, through the medium of, of contemporary craft. So she's using wool here, um, looking at complexity of relationships. She's looking at uh, herself, family, friends, lovers, queerness, um, and the social and historical complexities within this. So next we have a beautiful necklace, um, Sayat Gallery uh, from South Korea, um, focusing quite a lot on, on art jewellery, again joined us earlier on this year and are coming next year. Um, and this is a new artist, um, Hoju Kim, uh, that chosen because, um, I guess because it's a, it's, a, it's a necklace, it's a smaller piece, um, and I really enjoy the variety of voice at, at the fair, which is um, considerably, you know, there's very quiet and subtle voices, um, as well as as, mu as much louder as well. Um, so this work, um, we were really intrigued by the, the, the technique. Um, so this artist uses a range of techniques to, to create her, her work, but this is specifically enamel on electro-formed copper. So enameling, filing, sanding, um, various different layers to create these um, incredible uh, textured surfaces and obviously that's a very interesting layer of colour. So this um, is another new exhibitor joining us, Common Sense Gallery from, from Austria. So again, the first time we've had a, an Austrian gallery at the fair. Um, we thought this is really interesting in terms of uh, so Spencer, Spencer's work here. Um, again, in terms of um, the image of, of, of humans coming through, uh, some of the earlier years at Collect seemed to focus a lot on, uh, on form and, and abstraction. We definitely have a lot around um, identity. Um, so this is tapestry um, from, from um, Spencer. And uh, looking at characters, so these are people that he's met um, through a variety of different travels, uh, New York, pa uh, Paris, Vienna, and Berlin, um, and looking at uh, both the ancient and, and the modern, um, and, and obviously incredibly uh, um, playful in terms of, of, of his language. So the last slide here, um, we've got an example of, uh, Isabel was talking of, about this artist, so another uh, new gallery to the fair, Stratford Gallery. Um, they're an established gallery, they're, they're not a, a new, new gallery, but they're new to us. Um, and we're really excited about what they've curated um, uh, for, for, for next year. So it's regional excellence um, in and beyond tradition. Uh, looking at ceramic makers from both Japan and Korea and looking at sort of how, how those artists are conforming to, to regional styles and traditions but also veering away from them with a particular onus on, on female artists that not have always been given the, the credibility in terms of, of, of traditions, in terms of, of passing down. 
Um, so we felt that this sort of work is uh, particularly relevant to collect. The sort of people that come to, to, to collect are incredibly uh, educated um, in terms of, of, of material craft. And this sort of layer of subtlety and connection within the work we thought would, would go down incredibly well. So this is beautiful flower piece that uh, Isabel described earlier on. Um, back to Isabel for a few more uh, highlights from this year and an overview. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Dane. That's really, really helpful and interesting. Um, so we will let these slides roll again shortly and add those other five in so you can keep looking at them. And this is just a flavour of what you're going to see. Um, and the press release, along with other, the FAQ document that we'll put together, will give you much more in-depth information. And of course, it keeps coming, keeps coming as the fair approaches. Um, so I'll just take this moment because we have to do this and it's really interesting I think for you guys to know and it all forms part of the fair. Um, I just wanted to um, thank, it allows me to thank our advisory panel members for this year. We have a new panel every year so that enables us to have valuable fresh and independent voices when we're selecting for the fair. So this year we had Eric Neal who's director of the Chrysler Museum in Virginia in the USA. We had Robin Cordon Stewart, who was formerly at Sotheby's and is now senior director of Offer Waterman. Uh, Kathy Jean Grande, who is a special um, um, specialist artist, advisor, and fundraiser, and, and knows Collect extremely well. Melanie Grant, who's an author, writer, and curator, and executive director at the Responsible Jewelry Council. I also joined the, um, the panel and a chair of it, and obviously Daniela joins us as well. And then Collect Open has its own panel, and this year we had Basila Noah, who's a ceramicist and um, art activist, and Jason Stocks Young, who's a leather worker and founder of the Diamond Ore Leather Workshop on JSL Leatherworks, JSY, sorry, Leatherworks. And then Caroline Jackman joins us for that because of her huge knowledge, and she's a creative industries business consultant, and I, I join that uh, panel as well. So then that just leads us to give a special mention and acknowledge our wonderful partners. We are so lucky we have fantastic partners at Collect whose passion and commitment to support craft is one to be commended. Their alignment with the fair demonstrates their leadership in embracing contemporary craft, whether it be through advocacy, purchase, commission or employment. Firstly, we have Brookfield Properties as the fair's award partner and I do believe we have several joining us online. So welcome to you guys. Um, Brookfield Properties Support of Collect is part of a broad year-long partnership with the Crafts Council. It begins with the excitement of the selection of the artists which is done from Collect um, and on from a Collect gallery and they are awarded um, the Craft Award to the artists themselves at the fair itself and it's done in, connect in partnership with the Crafts Council's collection. So seeing its fifth year in 2024, this is now one of the nation's leading craft prize, prizes and is set apart as the selected works are donated by Brookfield Cross Properties to the Crafts Council's national collection. It's an amazing uh, partnership we have with them. In addition, the winner receives a solo show at one of the major Brookfield's properties sites, giving access, public access to this incredible work and we'll be celebrating all five years of this this September, um, this coming um, summer 2024. Loewe Foundation are long-term partners of, of um, sponsors of Collect and Collect 2024 will be our seventh year of partnership. A very warm welcome for you who are joining us from Madrid. The alignment between Loewe Foundation and Collect is strong as evidenced year on year by the many Craft Prize alumni who are presented in Collect. We will be showcasing one of the shortlisted artworks from this year's prize at the fair, so watch this space as more information comes through. And in addition, in 2024, the Loewe Foundation talk will form part, part one of the major highlights in our talks programme. It's usually standing room only. And I'm also delighted to welcome a brand new partner to the fair, Ochre. And um, it's their fairs, 20, and they're their fairs 2024 VIP lounge sponsor. So welcome to you two for joining us online. They have beautiful showrooms on Pimlico Road, so do go and have a look. Ochre is known for its subtle and sophisticated furniture, lighting, accessories, and has showrooms in London and New York. The three designers, Harriet Maxwell MacDonald, Joanna Bibby, and Solène de la Fouchardier, share an intuitive and holistic approach 
when developing new products, which is a collaborative process. We are so looking forward to the incredible luxury space that they will be designing for the Collect VIP Lounge at Somerset House. And in addition, as I've mentioned, we have the Collect Talks programme, which will return with five excellent talks at Somerset House during the public open days of the fair. The programme is supported by Crafts Magazine, and I will enjoy talking through with Crafts Editor, Editor Debecca Ray, on some of the exciting themes that are coming through. And as mentioned, the Every Foundation talk will be part of this programme, and we're working with uh, World of Interiors, who delivered a really interesting talk last year, so we'll be doing that again. So we're going to just stop the slides now, and uh, there's a lot to absorb, and make sure we have questions, but what I'd like to do is to invite you to be a part of this. If you want material for rich editorial that has integrity and depth, along with Im images of incredible work, and will set you apart in your writing, then it's all here for the taking and will continue. Button Collective will follow up with uh, those who are attending today, but also those who are watching the recording. There'll be information at the end with contact details. But I'm now um, going to invite you all to attend in uh, 2024, and we really, really look forward to seeing you in Somerset House. And then I'm going to hand over now to Louise Oram, who's joined me now from Button Collective, who is going to continue on with um, some Q&A for those who've joined us live today. Thank you very much. <laughs>